sunny side up. They're sunny side up. So, uh, I guess what I first want to talk about, you guys all came from wildly different backgrounds when you started this thing. You've got a classical guitarist, math rock, visual artist, visual artist, drama student, band, video game guy. So what are you all... And Japan. Don't and Japan. So, I want to go off with each of you, starting with Jake. Ska wasn't always your thing, to the best of my knowledge. You are... Your main areas are other things. So what do you think the main areas of your life are influencing with this band? Well, okay. We have to restate that one. Uh, <laughs> no, per, okay. okay, so my personal voyage of life, the things that I've done and the things that I haven't done that are in relation to this band before I joined. I mean, obviously, my, my, my hobbies are just creative, and it's just a matter of me wanting to get better at what I do. Um, to quote Jeffrey Lewis, time is going to take so much away, but there's a way that you can offer time to trade. And my way is, you know, playing drums. And so. All right, let me move the question to Austin. What is, uh, what is like, what are you bringing from the rest of your life, your other interests, into this? How does? <laughs> uh, well, I try to bring. Uh, you know, I started playing drop and like concert stuff, which is boring. <laughs> I'm glad I don't play that anymore. And uh, yeah, but then you know, I started playing gigs with jazz band and stuff like that. And I like to drink some of that jazz improv. Improv is definitely my favorite kind of music. Something that sounds like it's coming from someone right as they like, making it up right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, then I'm just stoked all the time off of skateboarding and crazy shit. So it's the way to do it. On a scale of one to ten. Right now, how so? Probably a seven. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's pretty good stoke. Fairly right stoked. I don't think I'm ever under five. <laughs> that's <laughs> a pretty that's an interesting way to live even, life. Even when you're sleeping. Even when I'm sleeping, I'm just like, you're oh, yeah, just, I wish oh, I could. Oh, I just want to play trombone. Shred the gnar, man. <laughs> Shred the gnar. It gets teased. Oh, wow. he, he had dog meat. <laughs> All right, Taylor, it's your turn. You're in marching band, right? Is that oh man, I hate marching band. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Um, I I am a music education major with trumpet in my primary at UCO, and we doing all the jazz stuff. And I almost I, I did the high school middle school band thing, which got me into trumpet, but I almost quit. And my sister gave me a Scott album, and that's what got me kept me on trumpet because there was something other than crappy concert music, and and so. Uh, I, I, I bring whatever I can from music ed to here, and there's a lot of technical stuff and horn lines and that kind of thing. It, it, but it's also what keeps me sane, man. Because <laughs> the music ed thing is stressful as hell, taking 10 classes for 14 hours. It's bullshit. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Should we recite the end of Paradise in the Sky? Yeah, that yeah. one. <laughs> I'll never fucking make it. I'll never fucking. Fuck. Fuck. Fuck's all around. Fuck's it's okay. Fuck's all around. Alright. <laughs> hey, Garland, the question moves to you. Like, what? What oh, in boy. your life led to this, and what are you... Facebook, first of all, led, literally led to this, because I made a status update, and that's how the band started, was through a status update, which he replied to, <clears throat> so that's how that began. But, like, in other aspects of my life, uh, lyrically, Sunny Side Up is me bitching about a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's fun, though. It's, it's fun, fun bitching. Really fun bitching. bitching yeah. It's me being an immature asshole, and... Um, Except, well, I don't know, uh, I I'm trying to bring, I guess lyrically is where I bring the most stuff in. Um, even though I'm the bass player, I do write the majority of the lyrics, and then Lance writes the vocal melodies, so it works quite well. Because he's like a visual artist, see, and I'm more of like a putting silly words on paper type guy. Um, but, I don't know, um, music influences for me have always been from all over the place, but uh, like musically, the first things I ever started doing was making like trance remixes of like video game music. So, so like DJ G look up Saria's song Zelda Techno Mix, forty two thousand hits on YouTube. That was me. <laughs> so thank you very much. DJ G Wiz. DJ G Wiz. Um, oh, um, my biggest bass influences though are James DeVito of Anamanaguchi. Uh, Whoever plays bass in R.A. Ska Band, uh, and then people like that. So I, I pull it like a little bit from different places, put it together, and that's where we are here. So yeah, good. Right. Lance, 
You are, I heard, I've heard, I guess, from the rest of the members, man, you're actually not primarily a singer. Like, that wasn't something you did before this. You're a visual artist and you were a drama student, so... That's, that's actually... Wrong? Actually, no, I hit that nail on the head with that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, never did I think I was going to be on, on stage with a ska man. But, <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, though... Hey, ska, oh, you missed him. Wait, wait, got, wait, got, wait, got, wait, got, wait. Got, wait. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, <laughs> the thing is, back in the day, ska was always my thing in high school. Like, it it started out legitimately with uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and hearing <laughs> Goldfinger, uh, Goldfinger Superman. Oh. I can trace it back to that in like fourth grade. But, uh, yeah, I did a lot of drama stuff and really that's what I try to bring is is uh, a lot of visual performance. Well, like, just try to, day. yeah, like, dancing around, moving around, going ham, making an ass of myself. And it doesn't really matter what I do, because no matter what, <laughs> I'm... It's, it's just a split second thing, and it's going to be done as soon as we're off stage, and I might get a high five, a hug, whatever, and then it's over with. Some numbers. And it's just... <laughs> and digits. Damn digits. Damn digits. But, yeah, I just try to bring a visual side to it. Like a show. All right, and finally, the birthday boy himself. Uh, Tanner, what are you bringing from outside in? I didn't even know what Ska was until probably realizing that Tony Hawk's Goldfinger was Ska. <laughs> Tony Hawk's and Goldfinger. Or whatever. <laughs> Tony Hawk's Goldfinger. You know what I meant. It's like an Playing Tony Hawk <laughs> on my PS1 and realizing that that was Ska by this guy. Yeah. Uh, he, uh... <laughs> After this, was about to be question? some drama. Scrap. Uh, and then, you know, I got into listening to all the listen, all the basic third wave ska bands and you know, I kinda adapted my classical guitar playing skills into some of our songs and you'll be able to hear some of that on the full length. But uh, not so much in our beginning stages on newer or on our beginning songs because, you know, it wasn't really I don't know if I should look at the camera. Look at you. Uh, <laughs> but uh you know, I just, I don't know, I feel like all my influence have just kind of helped create the guitar riffs for this band, and whenever he likes something, he'll tell me, whenever he doesn't like something, he'll tell me, yeah. and, and know, boy do I, and yeah, and I'll, <laughs> I'll shape my riffs to fit his needs, and he'll, I mean, so work together. We're like, they're basically married. No, yeah. 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 Tanner is no, but a tool. Yeah, I'm a tool. I'm a tool in this game. No, but but yeah, really, Tanner I come up. Really I have a lot of really good ideas. The Sunny the... Side Up band is a lot like the board game Mousetrap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't quite understand that. Garland's <laughs> <all. laughs> right. playing. Would you, <laughs> would, would you like me to elaborate? Go on. Yes, go. Do. Mousetrap yeah. analogy. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot now. You guys, I have a confession, I've never played the game. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay. with that. But I feel like a little mouse, just running around, just trying not, trying, not get, <laughs> trying not to get cat, caught in that cat's trap. paw, or, or it's called trap. Basically, Basically what he's trying to say is we have a formula that works. Basically what I'm trying to say is... <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Formula kind of works until it all falls apart. Yeah, that I have a question, Cat. Can, can I ask a question? Do I have to answer? Yeah, you, you and everyone else. And Tim has to answer too. Alright, um... What's better than <laughs> No, 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 no. What do you prefer, PS1 or N64? Spyro, PS1. Okay. N64. Yeah, that was That's right, right Tim. Tim. Yeah, right. That's right, right, Tim. Jake. You know, I never had a PS1, but I had an N64, and that shit was the shit. Alright, Austin. This is a tough one. I'd have to go just because the original Smash Bros. Uh, the original Smash Bros. You got N64. I used to man. play that shit at McDonald's before I got my Happy Meal on. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> you remember when they used to have yes, that? Yes, I do remember that. The playground that. area. Yeah. They had all fuck, that shit. Fuck the ball pit. I just want to play. Fuck Diddy, <laughs> Diddy Kong Racing, dude. Diddy Kong With Racing. With Sig. I'm done. I'm here to help you. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I buy cigarettes from that guy. No, that's what. <laughs> Todd <laughs> gives god. me the golden balloons. All right. Anyway, Taylor. Um, PS1 for everything other than Ocarina of Time. I got. I gotta give 64 its credit. A, uh, oh man. Dreamcast. Go on. What? <laughs> it's like a Saturn. Even... Okay. This is the 21st century. Shout outs to my homies on the Dreamcast. Go. 
<laughs> N64 all the way. Okay. I okay. still have them. I have, I, never, my, I have the next question for this interview. So I never yeah. had an N64. Everyone, everyone go around. What's your favorite thing about cats? Tanner? Anyway. Next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this one's for the horns. Uh, oh, wait. From, from what I know, <laughs> both of you are just way too smart. So, I want to know, okay. what, <laughs> you guys musically, what is the song you're, you're most proud of uh, as horn players, and why? Okay. I'm curious to see if this is different. Feel you're free to name drop these songs. You're bringing, you're bringing the good ones. The intro to Terra's is really challenging yeah. the, the and new interesting. The new whatever it's going to end up being called Terra's. No, it's not called Terra's. It'll be called Terra's. Yeah, it'll still be called Terra's. Oh, no whatever shit. that song yeah. is, when he's like up in the higher register and I'm running the counter melody behind that, it just it's, it's answer and call like we're having a conversation. That one's good. Oh man, I'm hipster is poppy. Hipster girl is just poppy and love catchy it. as love it. all get out, dude. Fuck. Probably. <laughs> oh man. For me, the, the two, the one I'm most proud of writing is Mustang because because I love the melody and the chorus. Um, oh, forgot about that. Yeah, and and the stuff he does with the harmonies and everything, and that's that's another part where you kind of do a full response. And then the the leady solos in, in Terra's and in Polyamor at the end. The interesting thing about these answers is earlier we stated that concert band is extremely boring, that we just want to play loud and stuff, but those that we just reference are probably the softer things that we play, something that's more classical. <laughs> Which Tara's is a fucking like concert band. Whatever, Tara's play. like lead trumpet jazz band and shit for yeah, me. I guess. I'm like, I'm playing more. I play up high E flats, dude! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> I don't know. Okay. For the viewers at home, that means nothing. Sorry. Anyway, for the viewers Tanner, at home, that means really, 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 no, really, 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 What's your favorite thing to see lipstick hot. stains on? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I got some. <something> <laughs> cigarettes, the camera. coffee, if you mugs, fat collars, what's up? Don't, don't uh, call don't. people fat. No, I'm not. No. Yo, for the people at home, for the people at home, if you <laughs> found this video wow. and you're like, that's what I was as soon as you said that, come man, on now. Anyway, this is what you get for talking to people at home. Simmer down. For the people at home, if if you see this video, fire. And if you don't don't know what's going on and you've never heard us before, please tell us how you found this video. Thank you. Anyway, next question. <laughs> Leave it in the comments. Comments of the video. Subscribe, write me an email. I'm like, AIM me, golfer1023. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Alright. Skype. Alright, this one's for Jake, and it's the same question. What song that you've written since you've been with the band? What is the one that you're most proud of? What is the one that's, I guess, hardest for you? Okay, so, this, oh. They might not be the same thing at all. <laughs> well, okay. The song that I think is probably my proudest work, it's kind of hard to say because I've been writing songs with Sunny Set Up since Hipster Girl, which, you know, has given us Hipster Girl. A lot of really Good different, shit. interesting yeah. drummy parts for me. And, uh, you know, you have Hipster Girl, you have Mustang, you have Hollywood Horror, you have uh, Dead Society, and what's... Man. What's funny that these guys don't even know is that I've been writing these songs secretly to just work out different aspects of my drumming. For example, Dead, that. <laughs> Dead Society, you notice I do single stroke rolls so often and so fast, and that's just me working on my single yeah, stroke roll. Yeah, yeah, just like, da, drr, da, drr, you know, like a lot of that. And then Hollywood Horror, Horror is just working my bass drum yeah, foot out yeah, the whole intro. time. Yeah. It has really, the intro in and of itself is just, you know, metal as fuck, which is how I like to keep it because I have hate in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I think the coolest thing, the thing I'm most proud of for is, is in uh, uh, Dead Society, the boots got to boots. Da, da, oh da, god, da, da. that, is my that part is so fun. The pre-chorus. The, yeah, the, yeah, the pre-chorus. That part is so fun for me too. Because we added the horn hits to complement his drumming instead of all, the other way around. Close to open I never had to do. Yeah. All sorts of. All yeah. Yeah. So really, I'm I'm just you know trying to throw in things that will challenge me because I'm gonna have to play this shit live. So <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have to get really good at the complicated shit I write. I'll open the question up to you three too. What? What are you guys proud of? Uh, can I answer that both from a bass player and a lyricist standpoint? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, okay, bass playing, hipster girl. Mm. Oh <laughs> my god, locking in with this bitch. Yeah, that is really fun. Um, lyrically, 
Not Hipster Girls. Not Hipster Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to me. By know. the way, that song is by uh, Mackenzie okay. Ellis. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, two words. That is going to be the band joke Hipster for Girls. The next fuck you. you. <laughs> Forget uh, you. Get Honestly, the, the, the thing that I, I'd have to say I'm most proud of is Paradise in the Sky. Yeah, man. Ooh, it's like how much power. lyrically, actually, I just found out whenever we like, did our like last a week interview, interview. Yeah. No, like a week or two before we did this set, that that song was written about me, and I had oh, yeah. absolutely no I'm idea. So <laughs> I think this song is about you, okay, don't so, you? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but uh, it's really powerful. Hey now, and it's you're an all-star. Hey get your game on. Go, oh God. <laughs> anyway, all right. I love Smash Mouth. Mouth. It's just really powerful, and I really like it. It allows me to ham out and do my thing. Exactly <laughs> like so. Smash Mouth. I think my favorite song will probably have to be Paradise, and as far as a guitarist goes, uh, Terra's Luna. I think. I get to incorporate, even in the intro, uh, a little bit of tremolo, classical playing. I basically play my electric guitar like it's a classical guitar. And the rhythm that we do is so much different than all of our other songs. It's just like a perfect, I don't know. It's a really, it's a really jammy song, and I like jammy songs. Jammy songs are good. Jammy songs. Can I have all the rest of the band is doing? We're, we're jamming. <laughs> We're, we're singing Terrace. to Terrace. <laughs> Just because anyway. my favorite lyrics. <laughs> the chorus of Mustang and uh, Hollywood Horror. Okay. <laughs> Co written by Ryan Nelson, wherever he is. Anyway. He's right there. Nice. Oh, thanks. He's, he's All right. Well, we have the band's favorite things. Or favorite songs, I should say. Least favorite songs. Least favorite songs. I don't, do I want your least favorite songs? Or is that no, 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 no. That's I'll song. gladly tell you my least favorite song. Don't. Is, is no, it my own band? Or let's, is it let's not. It's, it's old. We don't even play it anymore. Um, oh, yeah. oh I fuck? agree. What the fuck? Uh, yeah. What the fuck is your ego about is my least favorite song. That's a bullshit song. That song's lyrics are hilarious, though. Hilarious! You know who you are. Anyway. You're not watching this, though, so that's okay. I'm not bitter anymore. Dude, where's Jake? Hi, we're Sunny Summer. <laughs> All right, so what I want to hear from you guys, something I've kind of heard from you before, is you don't consider yourselves or describe yourselves as a uh, <coughs> kind of the, the old run-of-the-mill typical 90s typical ska. What is it that you find that what is it that you don't like about, I guess, the stereotype in ska, and what is it that you're doing to change or to not be the stereotype that you see? So it's a two-part question. All right. Um, well, first off, it's all about attitude. It's the attitude, Gary England. Um, <laughs> because a lot of these ska bands that, you know, were coming out of the, the 90s and the third wave movement, they uh, they had this very silly sort of class clown-esque attitude to them. Which was cool, because they were the first ones to do yeah, it. Yeah, it was th th and that was new for them. And Fedora, that was... suspenders. Yeah. Checkers. And it was okay for a while, but that's what became the stereotype of ska's a whole genre. And ska goes far beyond just the third wave movement. And also, I mean, not every band in Third Wave was doing that. However, bands that have come out of, you know, or who've come out of, of the scene since then have been trying to replicate that mood and that style. And what it leads to is basically just shit. Like, it, it leads to a, a bad attitude, a... a um, it leads to a s stagnating. You don't go anywhere. It doesn't progress. It affects the music, too. Like, this, this silly type of... Um, Attitude lets bands be sloppy and then they play it off as good enough for ska, which is the worst fucking phrase. Whoever came up with that deserves to get shot because it is ska is hard music to play, and and, and this good enough for ska mentality is just so, <laughs> such crap. Anyway, um, but yeah. I and you know you know it really it really sucks because as someone who was introduced to first wave ska and then I started learning you know about the 90s ska bands. Man, it really sucks because the music's so good and it's just like, we're get, it's at the point where it's like, what the fuck do any of these songs mean? Yeah, like, like they're not relevant. The pit, I, the worst, I the can't fucking terror. relate to an entire, you know. Um, they're lyrically about as challenging as a third grade writing assignment. Yeah. Um, and, in the, and in the 90s, there was like a billion of them and they were all cookie cutters. 
just bam, bam, bam. Every band was exactly the same. Oh, another ska band. You know what I mean? But although we all like ska, every last one of us takes different um, influences from all kinds of stuff. And because it's a six-member band, each one of us has one-sixth uh, creativity, say. Creative yeah. say in the band. And so we get this really crazy meld of just, we land somewhere in the middle between all six of us. But we still are kind of a ska-based band. We have the horns and the funky drums and the bass and all that stuff and it lines up for a really interesting sound and as long as we progress it and as we progress with our influences you know I what, feel like one of the worst mistakes that these bands today are making is they're trying to pass it off as a fourth wave of ska when they're doing exactly what the third wave is doing and they're not progressing it as a genre like there's the first second and third wave there's first which was in like Jamaica then second was in England and then know, third the, is the first punk, is, punk is one of the most cultural like movements of its time, it was like Jamaica getting its first uh, world voice, having its own unique musical sound, and yeah, and you know they were talk, you know they were writing songs about tough fucking issues, you know Bar-tide, writing songs Bar-tide about Bar-tide about being shit. fucking poor and having to sell your soul to Studio One and writing songs about you know love songs that you know you know yeah free yeah. Mel's well that you know <laughs> actually Lance if I could correct you. But because Nelson Mandela, welcome if to you Ska don't know your history, was, you over was <laughs> in prison in the 80s. Well, oh, after hey. the initial Whoa. first wave. All right, all right. Let's anyway, just... he he brings up a great point though because um, ideally our genre can become so diverse and so well accepted into mainstream culture that waves shouldn't exist. It shouldn't be oh it's popular again, oh it's popular again, oh it's popular again. Is that we can have things like Lollapalooza, South by whatever, you know, and have. Just we have the rock bands, we have the indie bands, we have the ska influence bands that are sitting there, you know, as peers to every other genre, and we could finally be equals. But until we take ourselves a little bit more seriously, until we, you know, tighten up a little bit and actually get creative and realize that the '90s are fucking over, then we can, you know, be grown-ups. But unfortunately, some of these independent ska bands are trying to hold us down. And to all of you, I say fuck you. <laughs> and we, when we tour, we will not be called on you to fucking play with. So, yeah, no. Ne- Ah, this no. rant so brought to you say, by Garland Moore. <laughs> anyway. So you would say the isolation that we're seeing in modern spa is, is self enforced Yes, yes. absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Ska <laughs> bands play it off like, oh, they treat us like shit because we're ska. No, it's because... Because you suck. It's, 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 <laughs> it's because <laughs> you, put that, that, you put that on yourself. Tanner's gonna go get burgers. You put that stereotype on yourself because you don't take yourself seriously when you're writing music. Or you don't take yourself seriously as independent musicians. It's awful. Anyway. Uh, is in that, the, is in, that in the words of the famous real big fish? Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> and and a lot of y'all need to realize they're not the only ska band either. And they would say the same thing. So yeah, there you go. Is that is that the extent of uh, that? Or I, actually, second part of the question: What is it? We we know what you don't like about the genre now. Now, what's different about Sunny Side Up? Why is Sunny Side Up not power? That? First of all. Power, yeah. That's that's one thing we have. That all this something I've I've never that I've society, had man. to complain about Ugh. about ska is the cookie cutterness. Uh, everything ends up kind of sounding the same, but not just like musically, but lyrically you know, look, look. and as far as vocal melodies go, the way that the singers come about what they're doing, it all it's all the same whiny ska voice. Oh and my like, God, like the punk it, rock and that just voice. bugs me, man. This guy right here. You know, you know, some I hate cool, that. Something cool about Sunny Setup is, you know, I'm in a, I'm in another band. I'm in a math rock band. You know, every time, and this is something I feel like some of the R bands will start off and they're like, oh, we really like the Mighty Mighty Boston's. Well, let's start a ska band. You know, every song that we write, it's starting to sound different. There's something new to it. You know, it's a, it's a completely, it's com- it's a completely different. You know, you're working with someone new here. You got a blank canvas. You know, and like that's something that I experienced in my other band as well. You know, and that's something that's you know we're actually you know we're striving to have really well together as Sunny Setup. We're striving to make each song a challenge. Everything's yeah. becoming different. Everything is sounding different. We're getting different influences from different things. And you know that's how I feel <laughs> in my other band. You know, and that's just proof that Sunny Side of in and of itself of what we just said is the problem with previous ska bands. <coughs> you know, that that kind it's of proves it. It's about to fucking explore, man. Don't talk. 
Austin earlier said that uh, because, you know, we are six people, we have all these different influences from many different places, and especially in our newer songs, all of these outside influences are coming together to, uh, you know, create a, a completely different type of ska music. Yeah, we got our ska influence, but equally even now we have our, our like, we have some metal over here, we have some indie over here, and then me and him are talking about, like, getting some pedals later on doing some crazy stuff. So, I mean, like, we can have this mutual ground between us all. We all like ska music, but, you know, crazy. crazy. But, uh, I mean, let, let, let that just be, like, you know, the first step, you know? I got hit in the head with something. Leaf. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let it, okay, we have our ska influence. Let's take influence from everything else, and let's create music, you know? There's a difference between being a ska band and a band that plays ska. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have progressed as a band so much. When I got in here, it was ska. We gotta do ska. Let's do ska. Yeah. We're doing ska. And then we got that and we were like, done. All right. Okay. Yeah. We're doing ska. <laughs> we're we're right right done. We we're gotta move on. Right now, right now, we are in the progress of identifying ourselves as a different band. That's the thing that we uh, like, make right now. In agree. the next year, yeah. Sunny Setup is gonna completely redefine itself. And you know what? Still, we're gonna have those influences from where we began, that ska type thing, and that's the kind of thing. If more bands did, we could all together further the genre and the name of ska, ska influence. You know? So. Yep. Yeah, Plus, we fucking live in Oklahoma, and it's not like there's a huge ska scene. We have to play. We with, have three bands with these. <laughs> into, with, no, we have such a rich, you know, melting pot of a scene. But that's because yeah, that's you don't have, you know, as many. You know, it's fucking middle of the Bible Belt. You don't have all these kids that are starting. You, we don't have a big scene. Yeah. We're not like Austin or Tennessee. We don't have a big music scene. So what happens is all these kids are creating their own. And all these kids, you know, we're not all being like, let's play in ska bands. Some of us are. And it's beautiful how we have some of these ska bands playing shows with math rock musicians and indie bands. And, you know, just the other night, we played a show with two, you know, more math rocky bands and like three fucking DJs. Where else in the United States can you do that? Oklahoma music scene rules. Now. Yeah. Now. Right, right now, <laughs> now it's awesome. Um, when Wayne Coyne dies, it's just, it's, it's all gonna die. It's all gonna go downhill. <laughs> Mary Fallon will take over the Devon Tower. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. Before we do too, too Her crazy. daughter will smoke pot in, on the roof. Do we have any more questions? <laughs> hey man, one can help. I think uh, that's a wrap. Yes. For Island 3. Cool, cool. Hi, we're Sunny Side Up. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, was that was good. That was a lot better than the dog take. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, Tim, for putting up with our bullshit. Thank you, Ryland, for putting up with our bullshit. Yeah. Hopefully we get a good cut out of it. Burger, 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 burger. <laughs>